Hey guys, my name is Dr. Laird here at Heron Lakes Animal Hospital. Today I'm here with Lolly. Lolly's here because mom was saying that she had a decreased appetite, she was drinking a lot of water, and she was also having an increase in her urination. At the beginning of, or the end of October, mom had mentioned that she was also maybe sitting down, she wasn't sure if she was, um, you know, dragging her butt on the ground or what she was doing, but she was exhibiting this abnormal behavior. And so what we ended up doing was whenever we have one of the other things that mom was really concerned about was about potential weight loss. Now, <clears throat> whenever we have a severe amount of weight loss, one of the things that we have to take into consideration is cancer. And so um, what we did was we went ahead and we did some blood work um, and a urinalysis because of the urinary, you know, the increase in urination. And we were able to diagnose Lolly with diabetes. Now we were also able to diagnose her with something called pancreatitis. Uh, so that you guys are aware, the pancreas is the organ amongst many things. One of the things that it does is it produces digestive enzymes, which help us break down our food. And it also produces the insulin to help keep our blood sugar under control. Same thing for them. And so one of the things um, that is very common in diabetics is that they will have pancreatitis at the same time. We suspect that the cause of pancreatitis in dogs, a lot of our diabetes rather, a lot of times is something called subclinical pancreatitis. And so what that is, is essentially they have this inflammation of the pancreas, which is the organ that produces the insulin. And it's having all this damage done to it little by little. But the dogs or patients that we're aware of, we don't think they show us any signs of pain, discomfort, no change in appetite, no change in the stool, no vomiting. And so <clears throat> that's one of the main things that we have to take into consideration when we have a patient who's newly diagnosed with diabetes. The other reason we need to take that into consideration about them potentially having pancreatitis is because it can sometimes make it more difficult and more challenging for us to go ahead and get their diabetes under control. So right now we have Lolly on some IV fluids. As you can see, she's got this cone on to make sure she doesn't chew out her IV catheter. And she's got this little, this little accordion fluid line so that way as she moves around in the cage, it doesn't really get tangled up. One of the mainstays for pancreatitis treatment is IV fluid therapy and or hydration. Now, some people will say that you don't wanna go ahead and feed them um, for about 24 hours. The status on that is we actually want them to eat as quickly as possible once they're able to keep food down. With Lolly, she is not um, vomiting, so it is totally fine for us to go ahead and start feeding her. She is eating today. Um, and so once we diagnose them with diabetes, the other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to start them on insulin. Now the thing is, you wanna make sure that, um, that their blood sugar doesn't drop too low. So typically what's gonna end up happening is the veterinarian is gonna to wanna to monitor them for the first at least 12 hours to see what happens with their blood sugar. Is it gonna go high and then go really, really low? Or is it just gonna kinda of do what it should normally do, which is kinda of stay in the normal range? If you guys found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching and have a great day.